one and this one, but not him. He'll never learn. It'll be a waste of our time and resources, reported Hazel, our system principal uh, with responsibility for early and ongoing intervention. And I said in my usual leadership style, well, let's, let's buy some time. Let's wait a few days. Think about it differently. Let me know how it goes. You know, it was busy. There were annual reports to be written and presented. Not long after, Hazel and I were waiting outside the room uh, to present to our elected officials, the trustees, on that reading recovery program and how our students were doing across our 200 big busy schools. Just before we went into the meeting to deliver the report, Hazel said, I have a, a small video clip that I'd like to show at the end. It's of a boy, a little boy reading. I trusted Hazel implicitly. She was my knowledgeable other. Even though I hadn't seen the video, I said, oh, that's a great idea. So in we went to the meeting. And the report was well received. Our classroom teachers, our reading recovery teachers, and our leaders had done an exceptional job. And we were moving up, and we were becoming uh, very accomplished in ensuring that all of our grade one students were reading at our expected level level 16. Just as the report was finished and the lights were dimming to show the video, the door opened right beside me and I looked around and saw what I assumed was a mother and her little boy coming into the boardroom. Very unusual because we don't have too many people who love to come to our public board of trustee meetings. So I went over to her quietly and said, Welcome. Is there anything you'd like to say to the board? And she said, Oh, no, no, thank you. And I noticed a little boy, the little boy beside her, giggling with glee as he saw himself on the video. So when the video ended and the lights went up, the mother caught my eye and nodded yes. And I thought, oh dear, this is totally unrehearsed. I'm not sure what she's going to say. But I was in it. So I went over and said, oh, come, come to the podium. She started slowly and she said, trustees, thank you so much for believing in my boy. For believing my boy can learn from believing my boy can learn to read. I hope other students in need have that same opportunity. <clears throat> I looked around. There wasn't a dry eye in the room. You see, Tiger was his name, apparently. <laughs> Tiger had learned to read because Hazel, out of her busy schedule, had gone every day to his school for 20 weeks to provide his lessons, just customized to what he needed. And he achieved, achieved level 12. He was reading, and that's what the video portrayed. It was extra special because Tiger was identified Down syndrome, and no one believed he could learn. He's the same little boy that I started with. This one, this one, and this one, but not him. He'll never learn. And so it was especially point that Tiger learned to read, to functionally read. And I learned a lot from that lesson and I continue to learn. I learned that it was important to listen and really hear what colleagues were saying. 
I learned that it was important to take that deliberate pause, a step backward, and reflect on practice. And I learned how important it was to collaborate, to have an open to learning and an open to inquiry stance. You see, clarity is about learning as you go, not learning before you go. Clarity is about, about learning. It's about our parameter number one, all children can learn, and walking that talk.